Okay, it's safe to say, and I'm sure you're tracking this, that there was a lot of legal news this week. In a courtroom in downtown Manhattan, there were hours of testimony about Donald Trump and the National Enquirer and how they worked together to kill stories that might hurt his chances in 2016. Learned a lot about that. Here in Washington, inside the Supreme Court, Trump's lawyers were making the argument that, sure, killing your political rival would be completely fine for a president. That was their argument. I mean, it's been a lot to take in. But what happened this week matters. It should matter to you, all of us. And it's important to talk about why, especially during these moments when it feels like we're all drinking from a news fire hose. So we're going to start on Thursday at the Supreme Court. Because when you listen to these arguments, and it's cool that we could, you may have thought to yourself, I mean, this can't possibly be serious. If the president decides that his rival is a corrupt person and he orders the military or orders someone to assassinate him, is that within his official acts that for which he can get immunity? It would depend on the hypothetical, but we can see that could well be an official act. I mean, you heard that correctly. He said it could be an official act. So basically, I'm going to pause here. The lawyers for the former president of the United States and likely Republican nominee are arguing that, sure, if he or any other president for that matter just has a feeling that their opponent is corrupt, they can take care of that by killing them. But wait, there's more. At one point, Justice Kagan asked if a president can sell nuclear secrets to a foreign adversary. What did Trump's lawyer say? Basically, yep. And what about ordering the military to carry out a coup? Can he get away with that? According to Trump's lawyer, maybe. So basically, if a president does it, if he kills, if he coups, if he sells national security secrets, it's not illegal. And look, it may have sounded like the justices, when you listen to this, were preparing this for this hearing by coming up with the absolute craziest possible scenarios. Things so far outside the realm of possibility that whatever shocking thing Trump's lawyer said in response didn't really matter because... No, it's not something that would actually happen here. But the thing is, none of this is that much of a hypothetical when it comes to Donald Trump. I mean, in 2020, he was reportedly involved in efforts to direct the defense secretary to seize voting machines. That sure sounds like trying to use the military to carry out a coup. And just a few months ago, he mused about executing former Joint Chiefs Chairman Mark Milley. Trump once repeatedly said a staffer who leaked a story about him should be executed, too. And in an interview on Friday night just two days ago, former Attorney General Bill Barr said he used to say that kind of thing all the time. So when it comes to Donald Trump, no, those hypotheticals that got tossed around the Supreme Court this week aren't really hypotheticals, are they? I mean, this is stuff he talked about, stuff that was clearly rattling around in his head still is. And this is stuff his lawyers are now saying should be A-OK for a president to do. And here's the other really important thing to understand about all of this. I mean, the view of the presidency that Donald Trump has very clearly, this absolute power above the law mindset, is literally his plan for a second term. I mean, the plan, there's a plan. Right now, the far-right think tank, the Heritage Foundation, is hard at work drafting plans to convert Trump's calls for revenge and lawlessness into action. It's called Project 2025. It's nearly 1,000 pages long. It's online. You can read it if you want. It's probably not a beach read, but you you can take a look. In the meantime... I'm going to give you kind of like a Cliff Notes version of all of this. Their goal in this plan is to, quote, assemble an army of aligned, vetted, trained, and prepared conservatives to go to work on day one to deconstruct the administrative state. One big area under attack, no surprise, the Justice Department, which Project 2025 says has lost its way. And as the New York Times writes, to find its way back, it must become subservient to the White House. In plain English, that all basically means... They want to remake the structure and the staffing of the Justice Department so that an independent branch of government looks the other way. Well, Trump basically does whatever the heck he wants. Now, as the New York Times put it, according to the Project 2025 plan, the law must submit to the president's priorities. If not, the lawyers are doing it wrong. So, yeah, I mean, I'll admit it. Oral arguments in the Supreme Court aren't exactly appointment television all the time. They're confusing. They're definitely long-winded at times. But they matter clearly in the context of this specific case, but also because the responses from the Trump legal team tells a whole lot about how he sees the power of the presidency. 
and how he looks at a potential second term.